I want to ask you a question. Are you living in guilt? In condemnation? Are you living in a low place? There's a story that my dad said when I was growing up that I'll never forget. So the story involves somebody in Mexico. And he says a story of a man who had a prize rooster. This rooster had won many awards, many medals. It was a very prized rooster. And this man also had a son. He loved his son. It was his only son. But one day the father gave his son a pellet gun. And as the son's playing with the pellet gun, he accidentally shoots the rooster. And the rooster dies. Now remember, this is the father's prized rooster. This rooster has won the father many awards at many shows. So when the son shoots the rooster, he becomes scared. He grabs the rooster. He buries it. And he says, okay, well, I'm just going to say that it ran away or my dad's going to think that a coyote just took it or a fox just took it. Nobody's going to know. Well, the young man didn't know that the servant, the butler of the house, saw what had happened. And when the son walks inside, the butler tells him, hey, I saw what you did. I saw you shot the rooster and you buried it in the ground. Now, if you don't want me to tell your dad, you better help me with all my chores. When it's time to clean, you're going to clean. When it's time to do the laundry, you're going to do the laundry. When it's time to sweep, when it's time to mop, when it's time to do all the household chores, you're going to do all my chores for me. Because if you don't do them, if you don't do the chores for me, then I'm going to tell your dad. Well, the young man, because of the oppression he felt, because of the fear he felt, he thought the father was going to be extremely upset, extremely angry because he was scared of the father because he didn't want to let the father down. Does that sound familiar? Because he didn't want to let the father down. He entered a life of oppression and slavery. He was the owner of everything. He was the inheritor. But because of the fear to let the father down, he let himself be under the yoke of slavery, the yoke of oppression, the yoke of fear. Until one day, the young man said, that's enough. I'm tired of this. I'm not going to keep living oppressed. I'm not going to keep living down like this. I'm not going to keep letting this man oppress me and treat me like this. He said, it's enough. So he went up to the father and he said, dad, you remember that rooster that you've been looking for? Yes, son. He said, dad, I accidentally shot it with that pellet gun that you gave me. And I was so scared to let you down. I was so scared of what you were going to think, dad that I dug it in the ground. And it's been three months already, Dad. And I've been doing all the chores. And I've been doing all the cleaning. And I've been doing all the laundry. And I've been washing all the cars. And I've been raking all the leaves. And I've been doing all the chores. When you're off at work, the chores that the butler's supposed to be doing, I've been doing them, Dad. I've been under oppression. I've been under guilt. I've been under fear, Dad. But I don't want to be under this fear. I don't want to be under this guilt. I don't want to be under this oppression anymore, Dad. I'm sorry. It was me. And you know what the father told the son? The father told the son, son, you are much more valuable than that rooster. Yes, it's disappointing, but I love you more than I love that rooster. And you know what the father did when he found out that that butler was having his son oppressed and had him under that yoke of fear, that yoke of slavery? The father got rid of that butler. He fired him. I want to let you know that God loves you more than any of your failures. I want to let you know that the butler, the devil, the accuser, the adversary, the one who wants to put you in the yoke of bondage, the yoke of slavery. Now, in the story, it was a rooster. But in our lives, it can be a failure. It can be a temptation. It can be a struggle. It can be a battle. It can be a sin that you might have fallen into or a sin that you practiced, that you were practicing. In our life, it could be something like that, that the butler, the devil, the accuser, the adversary, the Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. That's all he does. He just loves to accuse. I want to let you know that the butler has been kicked out the house. You no longer have to put yourself under that yoke of slavery. You don't longer have to live under that oppression because of the fear of the father, because of the fear of the punishment. The Bible says that perfect love casts out all fear. Now, that doesn't mean if you're scared, God doesn't love you. No. That means that when we're scared, we don't yet understand the love of God. But I want to invite you, do what the young man did. He went up to the father 
And he told the father the truth. And when he told the father the truth, the father consoled him and the father forgave him. And the father lifted up that yoke of slavery, that yoke of bondage, that yoke of oppression. And the father got rid of the butler. I want to tell you that the father got rid of the butler 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ, the son of God, died on the cross for the salvation of your soul and the forgiveness of all your sins, past, present, and future. Jesus Christ got rid of that butler. I'm talking about the devil, the accuser, the adversary. The one who loves to remind you of your errors. The one who loves to remind you of your problems. The one that loves to remind you of your mistakes. Him, the butler, the devil, the adversary, the accuser of the brethren. He has no more power. He has no more authority in your life. God wants to lift you up. Stop living in that low place. And all you have to do to stop living in that low place is just go to the Father. The Bible says if any of you have sin, go to Him and confess your sins because Jesus is faithful to wash you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness, of all uncleanliness. The Bible says that when you and me confess our sins to Jesus, He will forgive us and He will wash us. Now it says, I write these things to you so that you do not sin. Of course, as Christians, we should live lives that are not practicing sins. We should live lives to honor the Father. Of course, 100%. Every born-again believer doesn't want to live in sin. Every born-again believer doesn't want to practice sin. Of course, that's why the devil uses the love of the Father against us to condemn us. That's why the devil uses the Word of God against us to condemn us, to guilt us. No born-again believer wants to sin, but do born-again believers sometimes still battle? Do born-again believers sometimes still struggle? Of course, yes. But that doesn't mean live in that oppression, live in that guilt, live in that fear. No, that means because you're a born again believer, because you no longer belong to the ways of the world, the Bible is saying, if you do sin, I write these things to you so that you may not sin, it tells us, but if you do sin, go to him, go to Jesus, because he is faithful and just to wash you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. You don't want to be in that low place. Of course not. No born-again believer wants to be living in that low place. Of course not. But don't let the devil have you living in bondage, have you living in oppression. Because literally all we have to do is go to the Father and confess our sins. And the Bible tells us that he will forgive us. Pay attention to the story. I'm going to read to you out of Luke chapter 13, verse 10 and 17. There's a woman who's bent over for 18 years. Something's rock, wrong with her spine or her muscles or her nervous system, whatever it might be. But whatever is wrong with her, it's making her only look at the ground. She cannot stand up straight. And the Bible says she's like this for 18 years. How long does the devil want to have you in oppression? As long as he can. The devil wants to have God's people in oppression as long as he can and as long as they let themselves. But I want to tell you, you don't have to let yourself because of Jesus Christ, you are set free and grace is waiting for you right now. Grace is waiting for you right now as you're listening to these words. The grace of God is available for you. The grace of God is waiting for you. God's freedom, God's victory, God's liberty in your mind is waiting for you right now. Look what happens here. He's teaching in the synagogue. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. What is the Sabbath day? The day of rest. And behold, there was a woman who had a disabling spirit for 18 years. How long does the devil want to keep you disabled spiritually? As long as you let yourself, as long as he can. She was bent over and could not fully straighten herself. When Jesus saw her, I want to let you know that Jesus is looking at you right now. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your disability. I want to let you know that Jesus is giving you permission to be freed from whatever guilt. Whatever condemnation, whatever oppression, whatever is keeping you down right now. This woman was bent over for 18 years. She couldn't look up. She couldn't straighten herself up. All she was looking at was the ground. The devil wants you to be walking around with your head bent over, with your spiritual life bent over. No confidence, no boldness, no strength. You're, you're not walking in the love of God. You're walking in fear. You're walking in condemnation. That's how the devil wants you to walk forward. But Jesus Christ is giving you permission. The same way he gave this woman permission and said, you are freed from your disability. I want to let you know right now that through Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross, the Bible says that he overcame both sin and death the bible says that he puts a public humiliation the powers of darkness the bible says that through jesus christ you are set free wherever the spirit of the lord is there is freedom jesus is giving you permission to right now start walking in freedom 
You don't have to continue to let that guilt and condemnation and fear keep you living in that low place. You don't have to. The devil will keep you there as long as you let yourself, but you don't have to. Oh, it's going to be hard. Oh, it's going to be difficult. You've already gotten used to walking in that low place. Can you imagine this woman? She had already got used to walking bent over for 18 years. She had already got used to looking at the dirt for 18 years. And Jesus is giving her permission. And Jesus is setting her free. And he's saying, you are freed from your disability. It's called faith. Look what the scripture continues to say. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight. And she glorified God. That's what we need to start doing right now. That's what we need to start doing right now, glorifying God. Glorifying God for the deliverance. Glorifying God for the freedom. It's not because of us, it's because of Him. It's not because of our merits, it's because of what He did on the cross. Right now where you are, start glorifying God and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you did for me on the cross. Thank you, Lord, because you love me so much, you sent your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, because when you resurrected on the third day, you overcame both sin and death, and you've given me that victory. Thank you, Lord, because you started a good work in my life. Thank you, Lord, because you've given me the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, because you're going to finish what you started in my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Start glorifying God. When you don't see it, Glorify God. When you don't feel it, glorify God because it's through Him. It's all through Him. Glorify the Lord. And look what else the Bible says. The devil don't like it and people ain't going to like it when they start seeing you walk in freedom. Look what scripture says. But the ruler of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, said to the people, There are six days in which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be healed. And do not, um, do not come on the Sabbath. Then the Lord answered him, you hypocrites. The guy was saying, don't come on the Sabbath day. What is the Sabbath day? The day of rest. He was saying, don't come on the Sabbath day to have rest. Don't come on the Sabbath day to be healed. And Jesus said, what? You hypocrites. Does not each of you on the Sabbath day untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, who Satan has bound for 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? Jesus is telling the people, you hypocrites, what do you mean? Don't come and be healed on the Sabbath day. When you go home, you loosen your donkey, you loosen your ox, and you take it to go drink water. How much more shouldn't this woman, who is a daughter of Abraham, who the devil has had bound for 18 years, how much more shouldn't she be refreshed today? How much more shouldn't she be delivered today? I want to let you know that Jesus is the Sabbath day. Jesus is the day of rest. You know how God created the earth on six days and he rested on the seventh day? Jesus is the seventh day. He is the perfect one. He is the complete one. He is the one that wants to give you rest. And Jesus right now wants to lead you to those rivers of living water. And all you have to do is trust him. That's all you have to do is trust him. The devil don't want you to trust him. The world don't want you to trust him. The flesh don't want you to trust him. But all you have to do is trust him. I want to let you know that he's already laid his hands on you through his Holy Spirit. When you believe his word, his Holy Spirit is inside of you and God's hand is all over your life. And look what the scripture continues to say. As he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame. And all the people rejoiced at the glorious things that were done by him. I want to let you know that there's rejoicing waiting for you. There's joy waiting for you. There's peace waiting for you. There's strength waiting for you. And it's all because of Jesus Christ. Stop living in that low place. You are set free in Jesus' name. This is not a presumption. This is not an assumption. This is not a maybe. No, this is facts, biblical facts. You have been set free through Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. Remember, the butler, the accuser, the adversary, the ones that wants to keep you bound and oppressed, he has no more power. He has no more authority. He has this. Oh, he'll, he'll talk in your ear and he'll tell you things that sound right and he'll tell you things that sound true and he'll tell you, oh, you failed too much, you're miserable, you God's not going to forgive you, you're just a big hypocrite. No, he's been defeated on the cross through Jesus Christ. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, if that's you, if you want to start walking in your freedom, repeat this prayer. Repeat this prayer of faith. Say, Father God, I come to your presence and I thank you for what you've done in my life. Jesus, thank you. Because I believe you died on the cross and resurrected on the third day. Jesus, work in me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Refresh me. Do in my life what you did in this woman's life. Continue deliverance in me. Continue sanctification in me. Jesus, let me understand your love so that I can walk in your freedom. I pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Remember, through Jesus Christ you're set free. 
continue to walk forward. You have permission to be delivered. You have the permission to have victory. You have permission to continue to walk in victory. You have God's permission. You don't have to continue to live under that oppression. I hope this video was a blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I post weekly videos that I hope and pray will be a great encouragement to your life. So if that's you, subscribe and turn on those notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or for this video, you can do so by a feature at the bottom of your screen called Super Thanks. Those are always a great blessing to my life. Those are always greatly appreciated. It's a feature at the bottom of the screen. Super Thanks. Those are a great blessing to my life. And also, check out the link in my description. It's called Channel Memberships so that you can have access to archive videos for channel members and live archives that are for channel members only. Consider becoming a channel member. Those are also a great blessing. I'll see you soon, Lord willing. And before you click off, make sure you watch one of these videos.